The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and today we're going to be going back to the age of steam. And by going back to the age of steam, I mean staying in the current day, and I'm going to be making a steam-powered RetroPie game console. Stick around. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Now, of course, if we want to power something with steam, we need a source of steam power, which is why I picked up this. This is a super teeny tiny steam engine kit. And of course, that's something you can buy online for cheap. It's crazy. We really are living in the future. So it's got a super teeny tiny lamp, a super teeny tiny boiler, a super teeny tiny piston, teeny tiny crankshaft, teeny tiny flywheel. It's adorable. And uh, this is going to be our source of power. Okay, so how are we actually going to generate the electricity that we need from the output of the steam engine? Well, for electric motors, the vast oversimplification is put electrons in, get motion out, and conversely, put motion in, get electrons out. So for our uh, power source for generating uh, electrical current, I'm gonna be using this little pancake stepper motor. And we can couple the shaft of the stepper motor to the output shaft of the steam engine, and this will provide the electrons that we need to make everything get up and go. But let's jump over to the circuit so I can better explain how this is actually going to work. And one more thing, I should probably talk about uh, what the output of the stepper motor is going to be because this is going to determine what we need for our circuit in order to get our nice clean 5 volt source. So I've got my multimeter hooked up to uh, one of the coils of the bipolar stepper motor and uh, due to the arrangement of the coils we're going to get an alternating current so when I spin the motor we get about 1.2 volts peak, which is pretty low. It's nowhere near the five volts that we need, but that's fine because we can still rectify this and boost it to the five volts that we need for the Pi. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic for the power circuitry. So for all intents and purposes, we can consider the stepper motor to be an alternating current source. And that means that we need to rectify it because we ultimately need five volts DC. So I'm gonna be using a uh, full bridge rectifier, which will give us uh, a low voltage DC output. And this will be relatively choppy, so I'm going to smooth it with a little smoothing capacitor. And the output of that will be connected to a five volt boost converter. And then we'll have our five volt DC source, which we can use to charge a supercapacitor. So this is a massive uh, 15 farad supercapacitor that's rated for 5.6 volts, which is cutting it close, but that should be fine. And then the output of that uh, can be switched on via this toggle switch to another five volt DC boost converter. Now, wait a minute, isn't the output of this already five volts? What's, why do you, why do you need two five volt DC boost converters? Uh, let me draw a, another little diagram to explain that. Okay, so let's take a look at this drawing I've done, which I can use to uh, roughly demonstrate what's going on with the voltages uh, through time in the power circuit. So of course, at the start, we've got um, our AC input, which is of no real use to us because we can't drive our circuit with that. So then uh, when we rectify it with a full bridge rectifier, um, our voltage waveform would look something like this. But of course, these little valleys are of no use to us. So that's why we have uh, this smoothing capacitor. So we keep things relatively stable. Of course, there's still gonna be some ripple up there. Now this is still our lower voltage DC output. So then we boost that up to uh, five volts DC, and then this is what's going to connect to the capacitor. But 
as the capacitor discharges, it's going to have a serious voltage drop. Now, this is, of course, a useless output for us. Battery, I mean, not batteries, capacitors aren't like batteries. You can't just uh, power a circuit off a capacitor and expect it to run uh, in the same way. So this is why I've got the separate five volt boost converter. So rather than as soon as We've got the output, or our load, in this case, which is a Raspberry Pi in screen connected to the capacitor, which would, you know, cut off like right there or something once it's below like 4.5 volts. Instead, I've got the other five volt boost converter. So we'll have our five volts for a little bit longer, and then eventually it will still discharge. The only trade-off being that because we're running it through two switching five volt boost converters, that means it's uh, quite a bit less efficient. So uh, let's say one boost converter is running at 90% efficiency, and then it has to run through the other boost converter at 90% efficiency. So that's 81% efficient, which of course is still ideal and the efficiency drops of the regulator as the voltage drops too. So uh, it would be great if we could get away with just one, but in order to have this running for the maximum amount of time, which I want, I can deal with less efficiency. Plus this whole thing's running off a steam engine. It's fine, it's totally fine. Anyway, this is how uh, that is going to work. Okay, so here you can see the soldered circuit. I've got the stepper motor connected to the rectifier and it's going through just how I documented in the circuit. And I've got the removable toggle switch for a little bit easier assembly. I've got my multimeter hooked up here. So let me just spin this up real quick. Give it a few good revolutions. All right, that should be good. And let me turn that on to volts DC. And let me flip the switch. And hey, look at that, five volts. That's what we want, folks. So this is, of course, very raw. How about I go and design and build a really cool case to put it in? So as you can see, there are actually quite a few pieces that went into this build. For the most part, I tried to make everything out of brass or walnut because, you know, this is a classy build. But there were still some things that I needed to 3D print because the geometry was either too small or just really complicated. Particularly for the controller, which just consists of a bunch of uh, cherry keyboard keys that I popped into a 3D printed frame. And on top of the keys, there are custom plungers, so there's a little plastic plug that fits into a wooden keycap, and on top of that, there is a plastic insert that has the engraving for the button label. All right, that's about everything that I needed to make, so why don't I go put it together? Assembling steam-powered RetroPie game console in three, two, one. Wow, that was so easy. And by so easy, I mean it took several hours and I had to fix a couple things that I didn't think were broken. But that doesn't matter because we are just about ready to test this out. I just need to load some fuel into the lamp and I'm gonna put some water in the little teeny tiny boiler and then we can have ourselves a steam powered game console. Hopefully nothing catches on fire. All right, let's jump to that. Okay, so we are just about ready to go. I don't have too many tries, although I do have plenty of matches because uh, obviously there's only so much wick um, to burn. And once that boils the water and I see a little steam going, we'll uh, spin the flywheel to get the uh, reciprocating action going. And then I'll let it charge up for a few seconds and then we'll flip the switch 
and hopefully we should have a minute of gameplay. All right, let's give it a go. The flame's only mm, dangerously close to the belt, timing belt. We'll see if this works even once. And it put itself out. Great. All right, let's try again. Come on, you can do it. So there may be one critical flaw, one itty bitty teeny tiny, oh, the whole thing gets burning hot, which of course it does, of course it does. Why didn't I think of that? And the only thing that couples the pulley to the flywheel is of course a PLA part. Now the features are too small for me to machine, so I can't exactly uh, make it out of something else. But I have another idea that will still prove the point. Remember that finger-driven crank from earlier? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this for a while. Back in my day, we had to hand crank our video games. We wanted to play Tekken, we had to work for it. But you know what? I'm not giving up. This is still a cool little retro game console, so oh, I'm gonna power it the old fashioned way to boring, boring, boring USB. Fun, fun, fun. But you know what? This is still a console. I can still play games and I'm going to play Pac-Man, gosh dang it. All right, all right. Start, there we go. Start. There we go. All right, I get his pellet. Nope, not that pellet. I'm gonna keep running. Nope, oh, uh, uh, gotta keep running. All right, there we go. I died. And you know how Pac-Man goes. There's no two ways about it. I failed. I failed, screwed up. It doesn't work the way I want it to. I was close, I was real close. It definitely should have tested the steam engine beforehand on its own. Uh, I tried multiple times off camera, but I couldn't even get that to run on its own completely unloaded. So I guess it was kind of moot from the get go. And it's still a nifty design. I'm happy with the aesthetics. It's a playable RetroPie console and I'm cool with that, but I just wanted a steam powered emulator. I still think that's really cool, and it's something to try again in the future. But for right now, I'm going to sleep. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, if you want to see more, let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. See you guys next time.